Uh, Carl, you were talking about the play is about our unwillingness, maybe our even inability to step out outside of ourselves and consider other people's point of views because we're so wedded to our own ideas. Did you find, did you find that? Is that true in real life, how scientists operate? <clears throat> well, of course, I can't <clears throat> totally generalize, but I would say in the vast majority of cases that happens in your life, and it's in many respects a wonderful experience. Look, it's equivalent to falling in love with a person. Mm -hmm. You think you've discovered her, as I'll say in this case, her, for the first time. You have this idealized, wonderful feeling about her. <clears throat> and other people start telling you things about her that you don't like to hear, that is not consistent with your picture. But for quite a while, sometimes forever, you refuse to listen to it. In other cases, of course, you do do that. In the case of science, there's a protecting aspect of this here because you're <clears throat> in science <clears throat> we're both very cooperative and we're brutally competitive and our competitors are also our colleagues and they of course set out <clears throat> to disprove our hypothesis not of nastiness uh -huh. <clears throat> but in an attempt to show that there are no other alternative explanation that keeps us honest so even if you fall in love with the hypothesis, which is not great. Look, you, I suspect you must have had a program on cold fusion, for instance, just to use an example. Well, I think to this day, the original proponent of cold fusion is now in the late 80s, I think, early 90s, probably still believe that. Fleischmann. But most right. people, Fleischmann and Ponce, but most people don't anymore. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, uh, but I think that character... <laughs> It's an important one because it also drives us to excel. It drives us to prove our point. Uh, it is associated with ambition and name recognition, which is very important uh, among scientists. And it is both the nourishment and the poison of our culture. Mm -hmm. um, Simon Jones, how did you find the character of the scientist? And I say that because um, in the play, uh, you're, you're, you're described by... Uh, by uh, Lisa Harrow as being, quote, cocksure of yourself. Yes. And you act, and you certainly have that character. Is that? Oh, good. Oh, well, that's a relief. <laughs> I thought, yes, that might what? have been the biggest, uh, being self-effacing, as I naturally am, I, uh -huh. that might have been the biggest challenge. Um, it's, a, it's a great thrill to find myself sitting next to my uh, real-life counterpart. You have never met him before. No. Have, have you? I think they're almost similar, except he has considerably more hair. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. He, he looks much more serious and like a professor than I do, I guess. Wait, yeah, I you, think so. You're all more trendily dressed. <laughs> were you directed about how to be a cocksure scientist? Did you have any idea what one no, was? No, I don't think so. I don't think anyone said, no, you've got to come on and be right. fulfilled. We felt that, uh, you know, if she was describing me that way, then they have to decide one way or the other, the audience, whether she's right or wrong. But what was interesting was to find myself suddenly involved in a world of which I knew I... I must confess, and I'm ashamed to admit it, very little, mm -hmm. having been an English major myself, Cambridge. Mm -hmm. um, so the world of chemistry has opened wide. Mm -hmm. And uh, did you, how, how did you decide how you would model your scientist? What, he, what, what kind of character that would well, be? Well, I really can Actually, Lisa Harris' husband, Roger Payne, was a very good uh, source. The famous whale. The way famous whale scientist. Right. Uh, that's from, from him I learned that uh, one carries... Not in this case, I see, from Alfred. One's pencils in one's uh, top pocket. And, uh, uh -oh. yes, no, don't see that either it's there. I'm on you either. Um, <laughs> I dropped my pocket protector today. So yes, yes. Um, and there's no way you could describe Alfred as even shab shabbily dressed. So I think it might be said that I am, uh, <clears throat> well, perhaps uh, an artist's idea of what a chemist looks like. <laughs> <laughs>